And then I'm going to take the yarn, just like this, and I'm going to take my crochet stick, and I'm just going to... <laughs> Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how I made a crocheted bandana. For some reason of lately, I have been obsessed with granny squares and crocheting things. And usually my crocheting and like yarn activities, I don't know, they really kind of start in August when like the cool weather is kind of coming in, but it's, it's the middle of May and I have never felt more inspired to crochet things. Now if you have been following my channel over the last few months I have made many bandanas and I'm obsessed with wearing them. I just like wearing bandanas. There's a few reasons why I do like wearing bandanas. Number one, the cottage core. And now that it is the nice warm, warmish weather, it's getting there. I like to have my windows down in my car. Again, the car air conditioning doesn't work and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it fixed this year because monies. And I'm one of those people who just doesn't like wearing my hair in a ponytail. I used to be one of those people who just always wore it in a ponytail, but now I can't stand it because it just hits the back of the headrest and it drives me nuts. So I prefer not to wear my hair in a ponytail, hair scarf bandana on my head so that way if the wind comes in, my hair doesn't go anywhere, it stays in one spot. Also, I look super cool in, in my mind. I don't know, people might think I'm an old lady, but that's okay, that's kind of what I'm going for. In this video, I am gonna be showing you how I made my bandana and, um, you know, I'm showing you what I did wrong. When making your bandana, you definitely wanna use the right yarn. I didn't use the right yarn the first time I did this. I did not film my first time doing it because I'm like, I just wanna crochet something. And then I did and um, it didn't really turn out right because I used the wrong yarn. What I mean the wrong yarn is you wanna use a very lightweight yarn. I gotta deal with people mowing their lawns now. So I'm sorry if that's in the audio. The very first crochet bandana I made was uh, this one here. And you're like, oh, Michelle, that is so cute. This is also a different bandana that I'm gonna be showing you. This was just a random one that I found through another YouTube video. I'm like, I'm just gonna try it out. Mine is different. Mine is gonna have like, the whole thing is gonna be granny squares. And you're like, oh, but like, wh what's wrong with it? Do you see what I'm talking about? When it's too thick, it just kind of, it just kind of sticks up. And this is not the look I'm going for. I mean, if this is the look you're going for, use the thicker yarn. But if it's not the look you're going for, I suggest use a thinner yarn like I am suggesting you to do. It's just too bulky. This bandana tutorial is also how to make the granny square. The floral granny square, the daisy granny square. Same thing. I'm gonna show you how to make that granny square and then how to take all those granny squares and make them into a bandana, essentially. I bought all my yarn from Michaels. Again, I am in Canada, so I don't know if the yarn is different in the States or anywhere else that has a Michaels. I've already rolled them up, taken the labels off. A lot of the times I'm like, I'll take the labels off and I will save them. So if I ever do another project, I'm like, hey, I like that color, I'm gonna use it. And then I proceed to lose the labels, but not today. Today I have the labels for two of the uh, three colors. <laughs> but the brand I did use is Peyton's and this is the little label here. It looks like there's like a little honeycomb on the top. The border color that I am gonna use is just this green, which is a, uh, it's cherished green. I'm also gonna be writing down like all the information about this yarn in the description below. So say today you're not ready to make this crocheted bandana, but later on you are, it will all be in the description. So you don't have to like rewatch the video to figure out the colors I used. You can just look in the description below. And it's such like a nice soft yarn. And I know certain yarns you can buy at Michael's, the impeccable yarn. Sometimes it's a little scratchy when I'm like crocheting. I don't know, it's just, it's not smooth on the crochet hook. Whereas this, flat butter, it's super nice. I absolutely love this brand of yarn. Pretty much the same price as the impeccable yarn that you do get at Michael's. Also, if you're not familiar with crocheting or knitting or yarn, on it will actually tell you the size of the needles you need, the hooks you need. It's, it's all on here. And this one is actually a five millimeter Canadian and it is a USH8. I don't know what H8 means, but if you're from the US, that's the size you need. For the flower part of the granny square, I'm gonna be using this color here and it is actually an off white it almost has like a hint of yellow in it but it's it's not yellow it's definitely more white it is the same brand the same weight as the green and the color is a ran it's a r a n again i don't know how to pronounce things but i will be listing everything in the description below look at these colors they look so nice and they pair so nice together for the center of the granny square i didn't end up buying a new color i just used a color that i already have which is this 
yellow color here and unfortunately it is impeccable so it is a different thickness which is kind of strange because if I look on here like this is a pink one the impeccable label I know they're the same because it's pretty much the only yarn that I buy until I found that yarn now I'm obsessed with that yarn this here is the same weight it is also a five millimeter crochet hook which doesn't make any sense there's definitely like a difference in the thickness of the yarn like this yellow is so much thicker than this green I wish I did get them all the same size so that's another thing if when you are buying your yarn try to buy like the same brand of yarn and the same thickness of yarn because it will just make things a lot easier also for this video five millimeter crochet hook us h Eight. You're also gonna need a pair of scissors. All right, so now that I've shown you what you're gonna need to make the bandana, I guess it's time to show you how to actually make it. This is the type of granny square that I'm gonna be making in this video. This is your working yarn. The yarn that is connected to the ball is your working yarn. All right, I'm gonna take this yarn. The end of the yarn is gonna go underneath your hand, so it looks like that. You're just gonna do two fingers. You're going to loop and then loop over like an X. Then you're gonna grab your crochet hook. So you're gonna go under, take this through the loop and, and you grab it like that. This is your working yarn. You're gonna loop over that one more time and you're gonna pull through. You can take your fingers out of the yarn now. You're gonna go through the magic loop. You're gonna loop over one, pull through, and then pull through two. So then we have one chain through the loop yarn over pull through make sure that yarn is still on yarn over again pull through so now as you can see i have one chain two chain i'm gonna do this until i have eight chains one two three four five six seven now i know i said eight but what's gonna happen is I'm going to take this, and this is why it's called a magic loop. I'm gonna close that puppy up. Now it is closed. To make the eighth chain, I'm going to insert into this loop here, to the very first loop that we had made, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So if I count it, I'm gonna count this one here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to cut the working yarn, take the working yarn, loop over, and I'm just going to do a slip stitch. So just pull through and then pull that real tight and that's not gonna go anywhere. So now we have the center of our flower. Now onto the flower part. I'm going to be making a slip knot with my new collar. How to make the slip knot? Over, and then you see it's like this. You wanna do the X, you wanna go this way pull through, hold the tail, hold the working yarn, like that. And then you just kind of pull that, adjust it. Now I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch and I'm gonna be making eight petals. The first petal is gonna be a little bit different than the rest of the petals, but trust the process. I'm going to insert, take my working yarn, I'm gonna loop over and I'm gonna pull through this stitch and the loop that I have just created. Now I'm gonna chain three, so that's one, that's two, that's three. Next, it's gonna be kinda like a double crochet, but not, not a full double crochet. Yarn over, back into that same stitch, so insert into that same stitch, yarn over again, pull through, yarn over, and pull through just two. Now, if it was a double crochet, what I would be doing is I'd be yarning over again and pulling through all, all of these, but I'm not gonna be doing that for this. I'm gonna make another one. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So the very first petal, I'm just gonna have three stitches. The rest of them will have four and I'll get to it when we get onto the next petal. But for right now, it's gonna be three because you have one stitch, two stitch, three stitch, okay? So you're gonna yarn over, pull through all three. And now you have one petal. Next, you're going to chain two. So one, two. Then you're gonna yarn over and go into your very next stitch, which is this one here push through, then I'm going to yarn over with my working yarn, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. I'm going to keep doing this process until I have 
four loops on my hook. Yarn over, through the stitch, yarn over, out through the stitch, yarn over, pull through two. So now I have three. I'm gonna do this one more time. Yarn over, into the stitch, yarn over, out of the stitch, yarn over, pull through two. Now I have four little loopsies. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull through all four. And that is how you get your next petal. This is gonna happen till I have eight petals. And now that I'm at the eighth one, I'm going to chain two. And then I'm gonna go over to this here and then I'm just gonna do a slip stitch. So a slip stitch is you yarn over and you just pull through every single loop. And then I'm going to cut my working yarn and then do like one more little slip stitch. Little slip stitch. And then just pull tightly. <sighs> no, you can't. You can't sit there, Topsy. Cause I'm working. And then I'm going to take the yarn just like this and I'm gonna take my crochet stick and I'm just going to <laughs> On to the border. So you're gonna take your border color. I'm gonna be using this green color. Now I have cat fur everywhere. So the same loop that we made for the flower. It's like the end. So all our stitches for the border now is gonna go through each one of these little tiny holes. And remember when we were doing the chain of two? That's why. So we have that gap to make the border. Insert into the first little hole there. Loop over, pull through the stitch, pull through your hoop. Like that, and then pull tight. So now I'm going to chain five. Make sure you're using your working yarn because sometimes I end up using the tail and that doesn't work. One, two, three, four, five. I am going to be making two double crochets into this one. So this is gonna be the starting of a corner here and this is gonna count as one like double crochet. I'm only gonna do two double crochets so it's like three including this one and then every other one. So this here is gonna be a corner and this is gonna be a corner and like this is gonna be a corner. So to do the double crochet, I'm gonna yarn over, insert into that hole, yarn over, pull through. So now I have three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the other two. So now we only have one loop and that's all you want for this. This is different than the petals. You only wanna have one loop. Now I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now I'm going to move on to the next one. Now this is just gonna be like the flat edge, of the like kind of the flat part of the border. It is gonna be three half double crochets. And I know these names kind of get confusing. So for the double crochet, the half double crochet, you're going to do the exact same steps that you would do for a double. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. And instead of doing the double crochet like we did here where you pull through two, yarn over, pull through the next two, you're just going to have that yarn over like that and you're just going to pull through all three. So a half double is just skipping a step from a double crochet. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Now this one here is now gonna be a corner. So the way I'm gonna do my corner is a little bit different than what I've seen other people do their corners on YouTube. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna do three double crochets. Now, what I've seen other people do for their granny squares is that they will chain two and then do three more into this. I skip the chain two and I'm just gonna put it right back in. Do three more double crochets. So in total, there will be six double crochets in this corner piece. And as you can see, my tail pieces, they're just kind of following along. As you can see on the back here, like this is kind of just there. This is just kind of there. I'm gonna have to tie them, cut them off. Whereas this, they're just gonna be nice and hidden. Again, we are alternating between corner and flat piece. So this one is again, the three half double crochets. And then I'm going back to do the corner piece. And now that I'm back to the start of my corner, remember how I only did three? That's because I'm going to do the other three back into the same because this has six, this has six, this has six, this has three. So we gotta make sure that has six. Again, I'm going to do three double crochets. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through. 
like that. And then I'm going to do a little slip stitch. So just through this one here, yarn over, and again, slip stitch through all of them. Then I'm gonna cut my working yarn, yarn over, pull through. There we go. And I got a square there. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the half square. So the steps for this is pretty much exactly, like exactly the same. It just, we're only gonna do four of everything, except for the border. The border's a little different. So we're gonna start off with our magic loop. Remember how we did this? Over, X marks the spot, under, over, through. And this is your working yarn, over, through. Pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, so we have our one stitch there. I'm only gonna do this four times because this is half of a flower. And remember how on the other one, I only did seven because I connected? it? Well, this one isn't gonna get connected, so you wanna make sure you have all four. And what I mean by all four is I mean you wanna have one chain, two chain, three chain, four chain. Then you're going to pull the magic loop closed, cut off your working yarn, and then slip stitch that and pull it tight. So we have half a flower and time to work on the petals. So again, this is exactly the same as the first petals that we did. Okay, so now that I'm on the last petal, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chain three. One, two, three. So for this process here, I haven't really seen anyone else do it this way, but personally, I think it makes the bo half border that I gotta do a lot easier and a lot like cleaner looking. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna insert it all the way back down here into the yellow, yarn over, and then do a slip stitch where I pull through everything. So it's gonna look like that. Cut the working yarn, yarn over, another slip stitch and then pull tight. Now, the reason why I do this part, and I'll show you on an example that I've already done, I do that extra little stitch there, is so that way when I have to do my last corner, it doesn't interfere with this petal and it's on its own. So as you can see, the last of the border went through the petal and kind of cut the petal off a little bit, and I didn't really like that. I like how I have like the full petals, or is this one's kind of a little, why do I feel like a dentist right now? Like, oh, this is your tooth. This has the problem with the tooth. I don't know. I don't know why this makes me feel like a dentist right now. But anyways, that's why I add the little extra chain is so that way it looks like this and not like that. Now onto the border. Again, this is pretty much the same. Again, I feel like a dentist with this, with this hook is that we're going to have like three double crochets here. We're gonna have our three half doubles here. We're gonna have our six double crochets here, three halves here, and here, again, we're gonna have three double crochets. You see how there's like the three little things there? I'm gonna go through that. So I'm gonna yarn over, pull through the stitch and the hoop, yarn over, and I'm gonna chain five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. This part, this part, this, this is basically all the same as this. So I'm just gonna quickly crochet like half the border and when I get to the end, I'll start talking again. So now that I'm on the last corner, remember how I did those three extra little stitches? So now I have this extra hole. Yarn over, go through, and I'm gonna be doing my three double crochets. Take my working yarn, cut and then do a slip stitch, just like that. Pull through, I did not do that well at all, and tighten. And there we go. In total for this project, you will need five half squares and 10 full squares. All right, now it's time to connect all of the squares together. Your crochet hook and the color that you wanna connect, which should probably be the color of your border so it doesn't really show through. Do a slip knot. There we go. Make sure the two good sides are facing each other. And then all you're gonna have to do is line up the stitches. You have to go through both of them. I'm going to loop over and I'm gonna pull through all of the loops, okay? So insert into the next two stitches, yarn over, pull through. This is kinda the easy part because you're not really crocheting, you're just making a bunch of slip stitches. So when you flip it over, it's gonna look like that. 
So I'm gonna need to add one there, add one there. Third one goes there. So you kind of have to plan as you go. So these two are together here. So I know I need to add these two to these two. So I'm gonna flip those. And I know that these are the good sides. So I'm gonna flip those two. And then I'm just gonna continue. Again, I like to see where I'm going. And then I know this has to go here. Wait, I'm already confused. These two get connected. Unfold it. I am here. So it's gonna go like this. I'm losing track of where I am. Now I do like laying it out after every time I'm done a stitch so I know where I am. All right, so this is the back side. This is the good side. Remember when I was like, hide your thread while you're working? This is why otherwise you end up with a bunch of this. This is the pyramid so far. And now I have to stitch on all of these. And I am just really gonna just crochet just like a zigzag to get all these connected. Again, I'm going to find the corner, which is three and three put through. And this is what it looks like on the back. I think I'm gonna tie some of these off now. So what I'm going to do is I need to make an edge for this. So I'm gonna start making the edge for this and then I'm gonna start working on the scallop border. Nice little border just around here. And I think I'm going to do a half double along all of this so it kind of matches the width of this. So to do the half double, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. So you see kind of how that border's going. So I'm just gonna continue doing that all along. For the border, I am doing a half double stitch in every stitch. All right, so this is what it looks like on the good side. And now I want to put a scallop edge around all of it. I'm not too sure if I wanna put the scallop edge up here yet. So I'm gonna start off on the sides, work my way around. And then if I want the scallop edge, I can put it here. Scallop edge time. You can pick whatever color you want. I've decided to use the same color as here because I just think it would look nicer. And if it doesn't look nice, then I will take it all apart and uh, redo it. Again, we're gonna start off with our slip knot. I'm gonna put it right through this one. To do a scallop, it's just double crochets, all right? Double crochets. I'm gonna take my working yarn, loop over, and through the thing. Now I'm just going to yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull two. That is one. I have to do five, five of these double crochets in one stitch. So we have a scallop. You don't have to make a scallop in every single one. You skip two. I am going to skip this stitch. I am going to skip this stitch. And I'm gonna go into the third stitch. Yarn over, insert. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through the next two. And again, five more just in this stitch. We got two scallops. This same process all the way around the border until I get back to here. All right, so this is what it looks like now. So obviously you're gonna have to tie it somehow. I'm going to show you how to make the little ties for this. So for this, I am going to chain 40 loops. So again, I'm gonna do my little Thing. And then I'm going to slip the stitch right into the corner here and then just, just pull through one. I'm just gonna chain 40 chains. So that's one, two, three. Now that I've gotten 40, I'm gonna do something that we haven't done. And that is the single crochet. Different, wow. You're gonna skip the first loop and you're gonna go right into the second one. You're gonna yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, single crochet. And you're gonna do this 39 more times. 
right, and to finish it off, I'm just gonna do a slip stitch, cut the tail, slip stitch through that. And now we have one string. Now again, you can make this string as long or as short as you want. It just depends on how you like to tie it. And now I'm just gonna do the second one and then clean up these little pieces and I'm done. is done. I think it's super cute. I'll just turn around again. I think it turned out really good. Definitely a lot better than this one. And I really like how it's just granny square all around. I just think it looks really, really cute with the scallop detailing because then it's like not so much green. There's like a little, a little accent white on the edges. I definitely like how it fits. I do love putting two little, um, I'll say paper clips bobby pins in the sides here just to like keep it down you know so it doesn't really move around i don't have them in right now because uh, i don't know why they are i think what i would change differently is the way that i attach them here it doesn't look bad it looks pretty good but i think what i would do is instead of like crocheting them together i think i would just use a yarn needle and i think that's what i did for this but i made these like a few weeks apart so i kind of forgot what i did with this and this was a completely different tutorial so i didn't even go back to that one to make this one. For this one here, I just learned how to make the granny square and I winged the rest of it. Other than that, I think it's pretty cute. This is just so stinking cute. Oh, I could just wear it as a bandana, just like this. Also, uh, I just realized that my dress matches the wallpaper. Wallpaper. Also, I will show you the difference from the one that I made before. There's like a little, little tiny difference of the size. Like these are relatively the exact same size. It's just because this one is thicker. It doesn't sit on my head as nicely as the, the thinner crochet does. Okay, basically, I just want to make all the colors of this now. I think that wraps up this video. If there's anything that I left out or didn't mention or you're just curious about, please comment below. If you're new to my channel, and you like sewing, crafting, and thrifting, please subscribe. I think that is it. So y'all have a good day now.